who is the Vice President of Hindu Institute of Learning. Mr. Chana. Kana. Restraints are abstinences, restraints, ahimsa, non violence, not only of physical action but non violence of thought. Second, satya, truthfulness, being truthful. Now, in all other traditions of India, truthful to people like me was always introduced as the most important part. In yoga tradition, it takes second. Because in some instances, some circumstances, it might be important to defer. If somebody else is going to get hurt, to defer and therefore satya can be compromised. Truthfulness can be compromised and should be compromised. Third, non-stealing, contentment. Fourth, brahmacharya. Often misunderstood, brahmacharya in a traditional, not traditional, in a colloquial sense is, is abstaining from conjugal relationships. No. Brahmacharya's deepest meaning is to walk in Brahman consciousness, Christ consciousness, 
walk in the mind of the Buddha, walk in the service of Allah. That is Brahmacharya. And lastly, Aprigraha, non-possessiveness. This is my wedding ring. It was part of the stardust. After I'm gone, it'll be somebody's tooth fairy. It's not mine. I came to this world without any clothes and leave the world without any clothes. Possessiveness. It doesn't mean passive inaction. It means you do not make that a craving. Now, in the, the, the next five, uh, five requirements are not really restraints, they are observances. The first five that I just mentioned are for the external world. And the next five are observances, shorter, cleanliness, not just of the physical body, toothbrush and eye makeup and washing and toilet, etc. Shorter, purity of the body and purity of the mind. Purity of the thought. Santosha, contentment. Be content with what I have and not to clamor for more and more and more and more. Third, Swadhyaya, study of the self. Tapas. And tapas is the word which is similar to Ramida. Tapas is heat, heat that's generated. And I've just covered that in very briefly, two examples. But finishing the last of the two segments of the observances, next one being Ishra Pradhanani, or faith tradition, surrender. Surrender to the will of Allah. Magnificat, St. Luke's Gospel, of Song of Mary, surrender. Surrender is the ultimate requirement of all of us. Now, coming back to Tapas, I'll give you two examples. But before that, if I may just digress for a second. In the yoga tradition, all Indian traditions, it is encumber on us to enjoy all the senses, not to deny the pleasure of the senses, and not need the moderation, but with the purpose being that after you enjoy the senses, you remove all traces of craving for further enjoyment. Craving for further enjoyment, longing for further enjoyment. So you enjoyed it, and now we move on to calmness. Not the restlessness, I've enjoyed it, let me repeat that. I have been very privileged, one of my mentors, I thought he was going to be here tonight, Father David McPherson, another one, Father Terry Gallagher, when uh, Azimji said initially for me to come and join uh, sharing her thoughts, I was a bit reluctant because I do enjoy a cognac once a year with Father Terry Gallagher. He comes to my house, we enjoy cognac, we've been doing the last 15 years. But there's no craving. I enjoy his company, having a cognac, he comes to my house once or twice a year, but there's no craving. And that example, I finished off with two examples from, from uh, in this context. Many, many years ago, I happened to visit Mount Kailash up in the remote part of Tibet. A mountain 24,000 feet high, we were at the base 20,000 feet. And um, my preceptor asked me if I had gone as a tourist or as a pilgrim. Both go 747, both have Nike boots, both have these days cameras and cell phones and smartphones and, and uh, sleeping bags. But a tourist acquires new karmas in the Hindu context, Hindu context, acquires new karmas as a craving to repeat those experiences, repeat those pleasurable experiences. A pilgrim, having enjoyed it, renounces it. That's the difference. And also, second example, in this remote part of Tibet, 20,000 feet high, there is no protection from trees or rocks or anything. And once I had run into, it takes three days to walk around this mountain, solid granite, three days to walk around it. And the second day when the descent was there, I saw in the distance other two pilgrims walking, but they are walking in the sense of walking on their bodies. In the sense, they would lie down, then get up and put their feet where the head was. And that's how they did the parikrama on very, very arduous, very difficult task. I was far, far away. They didn't know my presence. It was a hailstorm. There was nobody around. I had one of these telephoto lenses. I could see them. They couldn't see me. They could have stopped. There was no cameraman. There was no video being taken. 
There's no one, not a single, not even a bird around, not even a species, add nothing around, they could have stopped, but they didn't. And when they came by, I put their hands on my head, and they were smiling, I was crying, of course, at the bush I had. They put my hand on their head, smiling, not self-flagellation, but with a pleasure. And that pleasure was Chitta Prasadhanam, pleasantness not just of the face, but of the mind. So, in other words, sacrifices, abstinences, restraints, all these done with a sense of offering, and even the breath is an offering, pleasure. Pleasantness of the mind, not pleasure, pleasantness of the mind. And that is our collective heritage from the Islamic tradition, which is shared in slight variations here and there, different than the year, but all faith tradition, I'd like to say much. And I thank you.